Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Downing, and today I get to present my very special mini air hockey table that also plays Doom. And though I hinted something about this over a year ago, the project sat untouched for most of that time, up until mid-August of this year. But more surprising than me starting a new project and keeping it indefinitely on a back burner, this project is not a portable gaming handheld. I <laughs> know, right? But the bigger question is why? Well, inspiration can be found in many forms, even if it did originate from a drugstore clearance rack end cap. And after the amount of fun my kids and I had with this little piece of junk, I decided it was time to try something new. So began what would end up becoming a two-year project from start to finish, but also became one of the coolest things I've ever built. That said, let's go check this out, and along the way, remember to strike that like button and give this channel new love from a new sub. As the title implies, this is a mini air hockey table, measuring only 24 by 36 inches, and offers players three kinds of play modes, each with its own unique spin on the game. Now, it should go without saying that to pull a project like this together, there has to be a lot of forethought and design. From the beginning, I knew I was going to need to use every resource I had available to me, which included the CNC router, flatbed printer, and vinyl cutters I use daily at my real job at Megaprint. And while it would have been possible to throw a basic table together with standard tools, it wouldn't have been nearly as flashy or feature-packed, and frankly, where's the fun in that? The mechanics of this air hockey table were pretty basic. That was, of course, until it came time for them all to work together. There were six main categories of components on this table. First, and most important, was the main deck. This included the side walls and the two middle legs that together made up the main rink. The LED backlights also ended up being part of the main deck as well. Second was the air blower system that circulates air to allow the puck to float slightly off the deck. Third, the power supply to power the LEDs, blowers, and electronics. Fourth, the puck traps with score detection. Fifth, an above rink dual screen scoreboard with audio video output and translucent 3D printed support rails with LED backlights. And sixth, a Raspberry Pi based control system with a Raspberry Pi 2B Plus and a Pi Pico for all the LED, scoreboard, and audio video functions. So now that we know what the main components were that were needed for the table, let's take a look at what it took to actually make and assemble them. The main deck, which was basically the nerve center of the whole table, was made up of six components on its own. The base layer was made of an aluminum composite material, CNC cut to shape, and was chosen for its moderate strength and heat resistance. A quarter inch thick acrylic spacer was CNC cut to give clearance for the LED backlights that would be mounted to the ACM. 600 LEDs made up the LED array. This would sit behind the acrylic tabletop to provide the lighting effects produced by the Pi. The tabletop itself, which was one of my favorite pieces to make, used a custom designed reverse printed piece of 8th inch acrylic that was also CNC drilled and cut. To make this table an actual rink, there needed to be side walls to contain the puck. The walls are made of a 3 quarter inch thick material called Comacell, with holes pre-drilled for threaded inserts which tied all the pieces of the main deck together. Two 3D printed legs were attached to the sides to provide middle support as well as mode selection and volume buttons for the electronic features. The blower system was probably the most simple of all the components, because it just consisted of two 120mm blower fans that together pushed around 80 CFM into the table. And speaking of power, the whole table is currently powered by an ATX 520W PC power supply. Though not the ideal choice, it was the only thing I had at the time that had both 12V and 5V outputs. These lines connected directly to a terminal block that acted as a distribution hub for all things voltage. 12V was needed for the blower fans, the audio amp, and the LCD displays in the scoreboard. 5 volts was used for all the LEDs and the Raspberry Pis. The puck traps were two large, multi-piece 3D printed components. And even being printed in a modular fashion, these were still a challenge to design and physically print. After each piece was printed, they were then adhered with an all-purpose ABS cement, as well as my version of plastic welding. Again, because I love to make things a challenge, the scoreboard was also one due in part to its fairly unique shape and feature details. Two identical halves were made up, each using one 4.3 inch composite display, two 40 ohm 3 watt full range speakers, and a backlit LED scoreboard header. As for the screen itself, it was suspended above the rink with two 3D printed LED lit arms that attached to a custom base handle mounted to the wall. 
With these components now physically built, and having the main deck functioning as a real air hockey table, it was time to get fancy. But because of the kind of coding I knew was going to go into this, I knew I wasn't going to have a single prayer in getting this done on my own. So enters my good friend, Crash Bash, part owner of the BitBuilt forums and a real-life software engineer. And not only did this project require his help, but it also involved him flying halfway across the country for a four-day modding marathon that would really start to show the potential of this little table. Truth be told, Crash was actually involved since the beginning of this project, and he was first brought in to help me get the LED array on the table working. While this was cool in its own right, this project was going to do a great deal more than just make LEDs flash. And as mentioned before, this would be accomplished through the magic of an old Raspberry Pi 2B Plus and a Pi Pico. So the puck traps were the first example of extended functionality through the Pi. On top of these traps catching a flying puck, they also house the IR LED brake beam sensors, that once the beam is broken by the puck, send a signal to the Raspberry Pi to count it as a score automatically. These switches were then connected to the 5 volt power rail, and then to a couple of the GPIO pins on the Pi. The next step was the scoreboard, and though I know I'll catch hell from my fellow modders for doing this, the screens use composite output. Yuck. But there were a couple good reasons for this. First and foremost, I had a bunch of old eBay backup screens I wanted to use up, but also because of the neat screen to LED mimic feature that would only work with the composite video capture card we had. The mode selection I thought was a pretty neat idea as well because it would allow a very simple user interface to switch between different play modes of the table. Though I didn't realize that to make this work, the config would need to use up a total of 10 GPIO pins on the Pi. It was because of this we ended up having to use a Pi Pico for the LED bars and the screen header LEDs because, well, we ran out of pins. Now I'm sure if you made it this far, you've noticed that I've not yet explained one very important feature. And that was, this air hockey table also plays Doom. But how exactly? Well, in short, though it's a path that I've actively stayed away from as a console modder, emulation has its place. This, of course, means that it doesn't just play Doom either, rather any game that can run through emulation station. And while playing these games through the overhead screen is fun and unique, there is one more cool feature that I had mentioned earlier, that being the composite to LED mimic feature, which means that everything being displayed through the composite output is being captured and remade on the LED array on the table below. Sort of. Again, like most things I build, it's not perfect. It's got plenty of flaws and opportunities for improvement, but again, for a first go with virtually everything being unknown, I've got an end product I'm pretty happy with. I also need to give another major shout out and thank you to Crash Bash for helping me the way he did with this project. And traveling over 1100 miles to help finish it is a favor I will never forget. And as always, I want to thank you guys so much for coming by and checking out this video. If you want more content like this, please feel free to check out my YouTube channel, my Discord, or my... What's it called now? X? And I will see you the next time around. Later, guys. Thank you. You want that puck? Oh, you want that puck, don't you? What? They don't go on that side. They don't go on that side. They go on this side. This has been my life for the past week and a half.